Okay, Mr. Gideon. Mr. Gideon, can you hear me? I can see you clearly. All right. So, guys, welcome to the live broadcast. So, we want to switch the software. I have to switch the software because that wasn't giving me connection. So, I have Mr. Gideon here with me. So, it's just the setting up he gets. So, he's going to come up shortly now. So, guys, welcome to live broadcast. So, Mr. Gideon, welcome to live broadcast. While people are joining in now, people are joining in the live broadcast right now. So, um, Mr. Gideon, let's do this. Okay, okay, wow, people. Okay, let me feature some comments. Yeah, I can see Mr. Chika uh, on here. Thank you for coming to the live broadcast, Mr. Chika. Thank you for coming to the live broadcast. So, um, can other people? Do so, Mr. Chika, can you hear me? Mr. Chika, can you hear me so we can hold on? We can move on. Mr. Gideon, are we good to go? Mr. Gideon. Gideon, are we good to go? Okay, okay. Mr. Chika, I said I, I, he said he can hear me. Okay. Mr. Chika, you can see yourself uh, on the screen right now. You say you can hear me. So I'm reaching my, my guest now. So he's going to start. This very soon now. Uh, so Mr. Gideon. Mr. Gideon. Mr. Gideon, can you move ahead? Let's let's do this. Okay, others who will join us, others will join us, and if others will join us, I guess. What else are going to join us?
Hello. Okay, guys. So I'm currently, I'm not hearing my guests, so currently I'm not hearing my guests, so I'm working on that. Mr. Gideon. Mr. Gideon, I, I can't hear you, so I'm working on it. I can't hear you, Mr. Gideon. Hello? Okay, I can hear myself, but I can't hear my guest. Okay, he's off now. Then I'm trying to bring him on back here yeah, because I, I don't know what was wrong. Um, my guest is going to come on very soon again. So, I don't know what's wrong, guys. To be honest, I don't know what's wrong. So I'm just trying to bring back because this is not funny at all. Seriously, I, I don't know I don't know what's wrong. Seriously, I don't know what's wrong. I guess we're actually trying to rectify it and guys, sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay, sorry for the delay guys. Those who are on that are live with me, sorry for the delay. Um is there very
So um I'm I'm still live on the broadcast now. So still waiting for me to give you my friends to verify the issue over here because this is not funny. This is not funny at all. This is not funny at all. This is not funny at all. Um Okay, guys, sorry for all this. Um, I'm still trying to bring it in now because Um, okay, guys. I'm still trying to bring Mr. Gideon. I'm still trying to bring Mr. Gideon. So Okay, Mr. Gideon is back. I guess I should hear him now. Can you hear me now? I guess I should hear him now. Mr. Gideon? Yes, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I guess it was from your end. Yeah, it was from my end. I had to disconnect and reconnect. So. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Mr. Gideon. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yes, can you hear me? So, Michael, yeah, I can hear great to finally do this. It's nice. Damn. Are you still here?
Are you still here? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so seriously, this has been really challenging. I don't know what to get, but challenge was too late to do this. So I used to be. Are you set? Let's go. I'm set to. Yeah, yeah. I have some people in life. I have about. Okay. They will, they will join up. More people will join up as we. And so, Mr. Gideon, welcome to Fire Talk with Michael Emos. It's a privilege to have you here on the hot seat and on the pod. Beyond you get so. Thank you for so having me. So we much. know for that do. Welcome to my live interview session. You get so. You know for that do. I like, like to begin because we lost some already by two p.m. So now it's already um quarter to to say you get so. Let's start. So I have my question lined up for you already. So let's start with the first one. So who is Gideon Olavi? Let's know you. Uh, Let's meet you. Who is Gideon Olavi? Okay. Um. Um. On the I'm Gideon Olavi. I'm just simple. Um, a marketer. I am a consultant, and um, I develop strategies for brand using your marketing, which is the way the mind think. So that your customer, so that we get into the way your customer think and develop marketing strategies and branding strategies that will help you to generate sales and make them to love you and, of course, generate more profit for you with less efforts than you would normally use. So that's me. Then I'm also very troublesome. I'm fun. I'm troublesome and. Um, I live in Lagos, Ibadan, then I also do Abuja. That's just me. Wow. Wait, like you stay in all these places. In, as in, where are you based? An so entrepreneur doesn't you have a house. house. Where are you, based? you know, I, I had this conversation with a friend, oh. and we are talking about how things, and I was telling uh, him but, how. How homeless I've become okay, this, in the last two years. That you move out, but just mention the tricky places where you always find me. Okay, okay. You mention tricky places, Abuja, Ibadan, Lagos, or which yeah. those places are really, really uh, active in terms of the house. Yeah. Thank you for that. So. My second question is, how do you spend your 24 hours every day? As very, very big, uh, kind of thing, which is very taxing, and I love, and I know most people are taxed a lot. So um, I'd like to know, how do you spend your 24 hours a day? Let's know how you spend that 24 hours a day. Most times I'm still awake. I'm probably on my bed to 10 o'clock. I know they tell you guys, early riser, I'm not one of them. Most times I'm sitting on my bed at 10 o'clock. From 10 o'clock, I start taking calls. I start consulting. And that's, let, let me balance this. Let me balance this so that you not get it out of context. You're not going to quote me. Most times I'm only on my bed at 10 o'clock because I work overnight. I have to deal with clients that are in different time zones. And sometimes I'm still up or I'm still on my bed on my laptop working on from home. Till 4, 4 a.m., sometimes 5 a.m., sometimes 6, 7. Then I'll just take a short nap till probably 10 o'clock. So I don't fix appointments till after 10 or in the afternoon. So after that happens, sometimes I move to the office. Sometimes I decide to work from home, which most times I actually love working from home. And um, I draft sales for now, look at my adverts, see which is converting well, um, record online courses, um, have sessions with my clients, develop strategies. Look at what my look at what my clients are doing. Figure out what they could do better and send them strategies. Then I write sales copy. What else do I do? Then I love to watch a lot of movies. 
I enjoy movies. I download my movies. I, sometimes I go back to look for movies as way back as 1984 and I download them. I really love movies. So I spend time seeing the movies. And if I'm not doing that, I'm reading, listening to a podcast or watching CNN. So that has been my day. Wow. 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 That's very, very, that's very, very thankful. So in a nutshell, that you mix uh, work and play aside. Yeah, that's the fun of working from home. You can have your TV on or you can have your I music like on. It. And yeah, if, you, if you're working from home, you can have your TV on, you can have your everything on and you could still be working. I love music. I listen to a lot of music. You could tell from the headset. Listen to a lot of music and um, I like to have my music on while I'm even working. So it's work and fun. Now that's cool. Yeah, yeah, work and fun. So you're gonna like that is balances the equation. So that's yeah. good to know about you, Mr. Gideon. Um that's good to know. Work and fun, yeah, because you can't also work all day and, and don't relax and buy the hands on fun. Yeah, yeah. You get so moving on, Mr. Gideon. So uh you are aware of you are aware of the current pandemic. Um, in your um, it's not been in the whole world like this. So, in light of, so I'd like to know what do you think about the pandemic? What do you think? Do you think that has changed a lot of things in the world? This pandemic, I've already this pandemic that started in March 2020. Do you think we have? This pandemic has already changed things about business. Okay. And yeah, um, what do you say? No, go on. I think you have the floor. Okay. Um, this pandemic has changed things for business since it started. You know, when it started, we thought it was going to be for like a week or two weeks, and um, things happened. In fact, it affected our personal life. If you know me, I never wear t-shirts, but you've noticed I've been putting on t-shirts since the pandemic started. That's because I've, most times I'm always on caftans. But now I've been putting on t-shirts. I went simple, like almost every other person. I went through my Agbada collections and I saw that two of them are spoilt because I've not used them for a while and I didn't probably take care of them well enough. And um, systems, people have seen that the internet is a place where you it's the internet is not the secondary thing the internet is the major thing taking your business online is now the major thing it's not like before when you think oh um maybe in the future i'm going to take my business online you don't want to pay attention to your online strategy but right now you realize that if you are not doing things the right way you are screwed so um this pandemic have changed things for business, I've changed things for life, I've changed things for friendship, and um, it's changed things all around. The idea is how are you now gonna make the best advantage of what is going on right now? Life is getting simple. Attention on the internet is have gotten have gone high. In fact, this guy that owns Zoom, one of the co-founders of Zoom, made about a hundred million made some i think 10 billion 10 billion extra during this pandemic a lot of people who are a lot of people who are in that niche who have tabs who have positioned themselves before the pandemic in the internet space made a lot of money during the pandemic and now we are getting to post pandemic and the thing is things are not going to go back to where it used to be they would may not be as dramatic as we thought it would be, but it will never be as as um, it's not. It will never go back to what it used to be. That means this time around, people are now online. People are spending more time online. People are spending more data online. You have more attention online. You we saw a lot of innovation during the pandemic. Some people started their IGTV. People started some challenge. Some people started to do different things. And um, the idea is, at the end of the pandemic, some people nearly hosted, I don't know who did that, but I was telling a friend that we could, you know, you could host an online, you could hold, host an online um, concert 
not just conference, where we have online conferences right now, our musicians could tap into it and host an online concert, make it free, let people come, make a name for it. YouTube will pay you for the views. It's just going to make sense. Uh, we could do a lot of things and some people started to do it and they begin to see the power of online of the online they begin to see the power of going online and um this pandemic has shown us that the internet is getting crazy the internet is is um serious and it's also redefined some businesses the way they do business i had a f i was discussing with someone and um she was talking and i was talking about doing local business and doing your SEO or doing selling to people in your locality and building visibility in your locality. During this pandemic, pandemic, people could not travel interstate. So if you're a business owner who used to do um, delivery outside Lagos, uh, you're in Ibadan or you're in Kano, and most of your audience are in, because you figure out Lagos audience are cheap to get, you um, decided to, to, build, to build your audience around them. And um, <clears throat> so you have to deliver product outside Lagos. You would suffer. People had issues because they couldn't deliver product outside Lagos. So that made people within that locality start looking inward for the people, for vendors selling the same thing in their locality. So people started using, that's when hashtags like Ibadan business and um, Kanu business started coming up instead of using the other ones. So when I'm trying to look for a good, I wanted to buy some stuffs during that time and i went on instagram to shop instead of using the normal shop i was using local sh local keywords local hashtags so that people so that i could find vendors that i know are in my locality uh, mm -hmm. that I could deliver that di directly you know before we we don't used to worry about uh, um locality we just worry about putting our business and reaching people beyond our locality, forgetting about our locality. So when this pandemic pandemic came in, it reminded us that we should also pay more attention to people within our locality, services within our locality. So when you want to buy shoe, you, you want the shoe right now, you're not waiting for six months or you don't know when the pandemic will be over for them to ship the shoe. So you want to fix your phone, you want to buy a shirt, you want to buy stuff that you like, you don't have to wait for that long. So what you need to do, we, we were looking for local content. And people did not know that, a lot of vendors did not know that they need to localize their content. I still saw vendors that couldn't deliver beyond the burden using, because I was, uh, I'm still in the burden. I was in, I was in the burden during the pandemic. So I see some vendors that were using hashtags for Lagos because they want to attract Lagos people. And that was doing marketing all wrong at that position, at that moment. So it just made us understand that we should also pay more attention to local content and um, the way things work. All right. Thank you for that wonderful. Thank you for the wonderful one. Like you said, let me quickly ask you that. Like, stuff that I've been seeing online during this pandemic is. It, it literally blew my mind because you know the thing about the online concert of which many people are doing it now because it's a challenge every day um conferences and all these summit but there's yeah. a concert i saw recent but this is a concert i've been seeing with it's a, it's a concert i saw recent i can get from this time away but most, most of them i saw one most of them were free like three that i think not physical there was one I saw recently, is a paid one. I, as I have like, I yeah, have a business. So a I was one. telling someone, imagine if oh, this, oh, if this oh, pandemic oh. have extended to January 1 and Alibaba has to hold his yearly show, I would advise him to have it and ticket it and have a password for it. So everybody's going to be in their room, cracking everybody up, exactly. look well dressed, that was, that was and just going to work. That's what I saw. It was only on Zoom. If you pay, they'll give you the access. Just imagine. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really crazy because a lot of things are going to change. So, on to the next question, Mr. Gideon. Well, I'm looking at uh, what can you say about the effect of this pandemic? The effect of the. What do you think about the effect of the pandemic on businesses going? of this pandemic on business is going forward i think this is the time for you to double your advertising budget this is the time for you to spend higher 
better people to do your adverts. Now, during this pandemic, people learned digital marketing. There were a lot of free courses. People learned something. So if you're an average person right now or you're just a beginner, you ch- you can't come and meet me that know the same thing that you know to pay you to do that. That means the, the game have shifted. The game, the market is looking for more it's looking for more professionals, people that know what they are doing beyond the average level. So before the pandemic, you can be an average guy, you just know a few things and you, people will still pay you to do it because they are clueless. But now they are no longer clueless. They had to do those things during the pandemic and they had to learn it. Google or YouTube was there for them to learn it. But they want better results than they can do. They don't even have faith in themselves that much. So what they are going to do is they're going to pay better people. Now, the thing is, attention online is high and a lot of people, business are going online. That means the competition online have increased. So if the competition online have increased, you have to be, if you were doing, if you could do 10 before, now you should be doing 20. Your adverts should increase. The money you're spending should increase. Your strategy should increase. What you should do is should increase. Most of the brands I work with, most of the brands I consult for before the pandemic doubled their advertising budget during the pandemic just to reach more. And those people built massive followers online because they took advantage of it. People were like there. Now, people have opened their eyes up and um, businesses are ready to go online. They know the, the effect of being online. Business that had no online presence suffered during the pandemic and they are ready to go online. But they're not going to hire... They're not going to hire just anybody. They are going to hire the best guys. So I'm going to ad- ad- advise guys that are learning this digital marketing skill or how to do whatever, whatever, should become best, better. Top up your skill. Get better at what you're doing. Okay. Be better at what you do, and um, you'll see what happens to you. The competition is tight, and when the competition is tight, you have to do more. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree on on that one because since the, the since that most people that I really want to get those and most of them get those for that and they look for the best of them. I think I really want to scale up their revenue during this period. So, on to the next question. We're looking at three important, um, actually four, actually four. And this really, this this relates to your industry where you where you are now. Yes, this relates to your industry. So, I'd like you to help us differentiate these four key trends in your industry. I know I thought you can say between marketing, advertising, and branding. I hope you got that. Yeah, I, I do get that. I did. I get that. So I'm going to tell you a very interesting story. Okay. So, um, right. No, you just imagine this. You imagine this. There's this guy. <laughs> you imagine. This guy have issues. He needs a girlfriend. He wants to take his life serious. He's a nerd. He knows nothing about ladies. And he meets his friend. This his friend knows how to get a lot of girls. This his friend is the ladies man. And he meets his friend and say, "Hey, uh, his friend name is Michael." And he meets Michael and say, "Michael, um, yeah, ladies man, I want you to do, help me get ladies." I need to have a girlfriend. I'm totally clueless at this point, and I need to do something with my life. I want to settle down. Probably want to get married, or just want to have a girlfriend. And Michael, which is the ladies' man, say, "Okay, no worry, my friend. I I got you. I'm going to hook you up." So what Michael does is um, he organize a party. Michael decides to organize a party, and this party is a girls-only party. So, and there are thousands of beautiful girls. He invites even his friends, told them to invite their friends. And um, he comes in with the other guy. Let's call the other guy Gideon. He comes in with Gideon to this party. And he says, Michael now talks to Gideon. Gideon, okay, you are here. Um, talk to these girls. Now, Gideon walks into the party and he sees all the girls. 
Now, let me pause that story and start explaining what happened. Gideon is you, which is the business owner that needs the girls require a stock. We are, the girls talk about the girls we are pointing to is just an example of clients. So Gideon needs girls. Gideon needs clients. See that? So Gideon going talking to Michael is Gideon talking to a marketing expert. The marketing expert knows how to attract clients. That's why I have a lot of clients. That is Michael that knows how to attract the girls. That's why I have a lot of girls. The marketing expert creating the party. Yeah, the marketing that. expert creating the party of where there are many girls is when he decides to run his adverts or decides to bring in, to run his marketing strategies to bring in the clients. Now, him taking Gideon there is now saying, okay, Gideon, I've run your adverts. Here we are. Close the sale. Now, he's going to take Gideon into the party. The party is going on. And now, I think you've understand marketing, right? Now, let's go to sales. Sales is when you can close the sales yourself, when you can convert that marketing effort to getting the money. So, the, um, Michael shows, tells Gideon. Now, imagine Michael goes to one of the girls and says, oh, um, hey, Linda, this is my friend Gideon. Gideon is a great guy talks about Gideon, makes some jokes, and Linda starts talking to Gideon, and Gideon probably gets Linda's number. Now, what did Michael do? Michael just did something called influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is you, the girl knows Michael, she doesn't know Gideon. Now, she's going to trust Gideon based on Michael's recommendation. That is influencer marketing. Do you get that? So now, um, if Michael did not do that, imagine Michael did not do that, and Gideon just walk into the room and start talking to any girl. Even what happens? That is going to be dependent on Gideon's sales skill. So, in as much as you need to have the best marketing system, you need to know how to sell. You need to have a sales. You must know how to close the sale. The best marketer can do all the work for you, and if you don't know how to close the sale, you're going to lose the sale. So now Gideon sees a very fine girl, and he walks up to the girl and say, "Hey, girl!" And he's, Gideon doesn't know how to talk to girl, obviously, and he and he talks rubbish and he scares the girl away, or he talks something that doesn't make get the girl attention, and she walks again. What did what just happened? Gideon just lost a good opportunity. It was like a penalty kick. They gave it to Gideon. Score your goal. He can't do that. That's because Gideon cannot play the penalty kick. That's because Gideon cannot talk to girls. Gideon talking to girls is Gideon's sales ability, closing the sales. No, um, Michael have generated the lead for him and done the whole thing. He have created the sales <laughs> funnel, built the whole thing, but Gideon cannot close that sale. Yeah, imagine this, Gideon. Imagine Gideon knows how to close the sales. Just imagine Gideon knows how to close the sales. Gideon knows how to talk to girls. Now, Gideon walks into the room and um, he smiles, makes a joke about the girl, and she laughs and she talks back at him and they flow. Now, Gideon has closed that sale. Now, for Gideon to close the sale, something is going to happen. If at the end of the day, he probably gets her number. Now, that's lead generation. Lead generation is when the, you give out something va valuable and they show they're interested in you. And by doing that, they give you back their contacts, probably their name, their name and email address. Now, Gideon has the girl's number. He can go back and follow up. That is follow up. But Gideon talking to that girl, if Gideon have the skill, the sales skill, he'll be able to close those deals. Now, closing is being able to take that marketing opportunity and convert it to sale marketing will not close the deal for you marketing will give you the opportunity sales will close the deal now let's talk about branding now imagine gideon went to that party with don't love slippers and he's looking tattered with his rubbish hair what happens the perception of the guy is going to talk to self so they will look at him and look like, who are you who do i know you get away now that is branding branding is the way you are perceived now, the way you're perceived depends on if you're going to close the deal. Now, branding affects closing your deals. Brand, the way you're branded affects the way you're going to close your deal. And the way you're branded affects your marketing. Now, Michael had his, market, had his branding well. I didn't think Michael was on tattered slippers and all. What's going to happen? He will not be able to pull that off. Get that party ready. Now, because Michael is not like that. He was able to do that. Now, let's talk about... <clears throat> Go back to branding. Now, imagine if Gideon has a good closing skill. Gideon knows how to talk to whoever he can talk to. 
and he can talk to the girl but because he's looking tattered and horrible what happens his chances of getting number or solving that is problem of getting a girlfriend at the end of that party have reduced because he has horrible branding branding is your perception now advertising is under marketing gideon um michael showing gideon showing gideon to his friends is advertising gideon do you get it so gideon walking into that party for that party to happen there was an advert and um michael telling people about the ad about the party and inviting those girls is advertising gideon talking to those girls and being able to close being able to um close them is sales marketing is creating the party so i think i've been able to um with this little story i've been able to paint a picture of what advertising that explains advertising branding and um what's the last one marketing to you sales and sales too sales too sales, to you sales. Yeah, ma yeah, yeah, you're correct. So thank you for that explanation. I you really did justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really did justice with that. With my knowledge, with all that you get, you understand, you really killed it with that story you dropped, you understand. So that story really uh make the old things look simple and also uh, a layman can really understand through that story you gave you get because it's very easy it can relate to the story you get. So thank you for that. So we're moving on now. We're moving on to the next question. So uh, okay. this is one question that <laughs> I guess when most people ask, when most people ask this question, they, okay, put it, it's kind of um, kind of it, it, it's a really tricky question. But <laughs> I'm going to try it to you. Okay. I'd like to hear your thoughts. So if you were to start. We had to start all over again, like, like if we had to start all over again now. What would you do differently? Like, what would you do differently? Mm. Okay, that's a question. That's a tricky question. It you, makes me look you. like I have regrets now, but I don't. Right. If I'm to start all over again, I'm going to do two things. Right. <laughs> Number one, pay more attention to okay. mentorship. Mentorship lately have given me access to some kind of people that my own network wouldn't have given me. Mentorship have given me access to buying things that I can't afford. Mentorship have given me access to play with instruments that I can't. For instance, I was working, I had a mentor and um, he brought me to his business to consult for him. I was able to get some experience down there that it's going to take me at least 10 years for me to get there. So if I'd had that experience earlier, at, by the time I was done with that project, I was like, are you supposed to pay me or I'm supposed to pay you? That was what mentorship did for me. So, um, mentorship have given me, imagine you have, imagine you have a big brother. This is what mentorship does for you. Imagine you have a very big brother. Your big brother has money, but you don't have the kind of money he has. Will you still, will your big brother have a problem with you driving his cars? He has 10 cars in the compound. And you can drive. He won't have a problem with you driving the car. So you have access to driving cars that you cannot on a normal day afford. So that's what mentorship is. It gives you access to things you may not be able to do on your own. And it makes you avoid some mistakes. There are some things I try figuring out myself that I shouldn't have figured out myself. I should have just allowed some mentors to show me to show me. And it's my journey would have been way faster. But I'm still not, but there are still some things you still have to figure out yourself. <laughs> The next thing was branding. When I started, I was way young. Well, of course, I'm still very young. I said I was way young. I didn't pay more attention to branding. I was just paying attention to my content because I thought, oh, I'm a genius. I'm good at what I do. Everybody will listen to me. But I didn't know that people will first of all see you before they hear you. People will first of all see you before they hear you. So if you don't pay attention to branding, even if you are worth a million bucks, but your branding is telling the world that you are worth 10 Naira, people are going to do you as 10 Naira. There was this service I offered many years ago, and um, I was struggling to sell it for 10,000 Naira. 
In fact, I told someone my service was 10,000 naira. This is what happened. He works in a bank, one of the major banks, as one of their top executives. He told me I was expensive. Last year, I sold that same service to him for almost 400k. Same thing I could have done 10,000 naira. Back then, I was begging him for 10,000 naira. When he told me he wanted it back then, 10,000 naira. It's what I did for 400,000 naira last year for him. So the idea is, what happened? The brand changed. Branding came in. I didn't pay attention to those things. So for you to be able to appear before serious people, you have to look like them. I didn't know how to dress. I didn't know how to... I didn't know how to brand my products. See, there's something that branding does for you. It distinguishes you from every other person. That is why an, an, an iPhone is twice the price of any other phone. Branding. If you want to, if you want, if you want to go faster, pay attention to your branding. So that's what I have to say. Two things I would have done better if I'm starting again is pay more attention to my branding earlier and mentorship. And I always advise anybody, if you're oh, starting, wow. pay serious attention to mentorship and branding. Branding. So, so we, got, we got that mentorship. Yeah. Then also learn how to sell too. I think I have that now. But learn how to sell on time. Learn how to sell on time. Okay. So we'll, we'll, I'll make it three now. Mentorship, branding, and selling. And selling. And selling. Okay. So I got that. Um, so on to the next one. So which is your preference now? This is still in the industry. Which is your preference? Which will really advise for for business starting out or do or already existing businesses? So which are you going for? Or which is better? Or which is preferable? Even during these times we are digital marketing or influencer marketing. Ah, now the thing with digital marketing and influencer marketing is back then I would have just told you influencer marketing or maybe I would have said digital marketing. They are very tricky. I've handled campaigns that have run into millions on digital marketing and on influencer marketing. We pay, my clients pay influencer marketing heavily to do marketing for them. And I've seen the results. Now, the thing with influencer, if you're starting up, I want to advise you to use influencer marketing. Advise you to use digital marketing. The thing with influencer marketing is that it was back then when once an influencer show your product, people are going to jump on it. But now it doesn't work that way. The conversion have gone lower than what it used to be. But the thing that influencer marketing does for you is that it makes you an authority. Now, Pierre, do you know this brand called Rimo? This came on with headsets. Right. and everything yeah they came with headset charger and all oh. for them to stand out yeah yeah I for them to them. for them yeah. to stand out as a different brand in the market what did you think they did they went to get two face they paid him a whole lot of money come and endorse us so when, once they did that they're no longer seen as one of those china chargers or one of those china epis they could hike their price they took their price high and that was the work of that's a good work of influencer marketing influencer marketing works well you can't pay to face the kind of money they paid to face to get the result they want to do when some people want to tap into some emotional part they they do the influencer marketing thing but digital marketing influencer, digital marketing is still on that influencer marketing is still on that digital marketing now i'm i'll guess you're talking about social media marketing which is running your adverts if you can give if you're starting up and you're selling cream and you're going to give to face your cream aside him charging you and just putting doing a shout out on his page you'll not get much now the way influencer marketing work is it works with time over and time over and over and over it works with time they have to keep doing that thing over and over and over again you don't just meet someone once and say oh i like this person you, you come to my party and I introduce you to someone. You don't just, the chances of trusting that person immediately is lower, is low. But if you come to my party and I introduce you to someone and um, you may not trust the person immediately, but later you meet another person, later you meet me at another party and I introduce you to that person again. You meet me at another party and I introduce you to that person like four, five, six, seven times. You don't trust the person. You don't trust that person. Oh, if Gideon can keep introducing me or if Gideon would keep hanging up with this person, it means this person doesn't. The thing with influencer marketing is that we do it once in Nigeria. 
we will find one person and give the person 100k 200k once can we truly can a small business truly afford to keep paying the same influencer money for a period of six months to to influence to influence the audience to like their brand that is why those big brands that have the money pay serious money to influencer marketing and sign them for a long time so they don't charge them extra so we, we assign them for two years. That means for the next two years as my ambassador, you have to show up for my events. You have to do this. You have to do that. Can we afford it? So as a small business, I want to advise you to go full influencer marketing. There are many influencer market, marketers, which are some celebrities that people trust and emotionally connected to. You can do little of that, but you not get as much value as you get, as you get when you run your adverts. That's the truth. I've done it. I'm going to be blunt with you. There's some people that want to come and meet me and say, Gideon, I want to give you money to do something. No. Spend that money on adverts. But if you want to build a brand, if you want to build a reputation and you're not looking for immediate sales, do influencer marketing. But if you're trying to, and do a lot of retargeting, but if you're trying to build a, a brand, if you're not trying to build a brand, your business is just starting and you just want to make money so that you can move to the next business, you don't need influencer marketing immediately. You don't. Then it also depends on what you're selling. Now, there are some kind of products that you, especially a high value product that you just have to do influencer marketing for. For instance, if I'm selling private jets, I can't run advert and expect it to convert. Who do you think, wait, who do you think, who do you think tell these billionaires where to buy their jets? Is you think it's advert? No, they call their friends. They just, Bill Gates to pick up his phone and call Warren. Hey, hey Warren. Um, where do you get your last private jet from? Who did the furnishing for you? And that guy will say, oh, it's this guy. And he gives him the contact. They don't, they don't go through Facebook adverts. See, we send proposals to them. We do all these things. I've been in those places where I've worked with influential people and I've seen all the proposals that come. They skip those proposals. I mean, there's a proposal on your table on how to do this thing. And yet you're calling your friend who, to give you his guy. Because at some point, they don't want some stress. So if you're going to do influencer marketing, if you're selling a Rolls Royce, you can do it to influencer marketing. You can give it to a movie star or you can give it to a big guy and the guy who uses the Rolls Royce. So when I want to buy a Rolls Royce and we're in the same circle, I want to buy a yacht or a plane because you gave me a free Rolls Royce as an influencer because I'm rich, I can afford it. And I think never give your product free to people who, can, who cannot afford it. Don't give your products free to people who cannot afford it. That's another marketing secret, but I'm not going to go there. So you give it to the guy. It's an influencer. It's, it becomes, if I give my yacht, a yacht to Bill Gates right now, so I can give me a recommendation whenever anybody calls him for that they want to buy a yacht too. What happens? Bill Gates is an influencer. That's influencer marketing. So sometimes we don't get this thing right. Influencer, if you're selling expensive things, do more influencer marketing you can afford it i think that should answer the question all right all right so in, in summary if i got you correctly you said uh you want to advise small businesses to go for influencer marketing yeah Uh, because as a small business owner, I believe you entering a business uh, newly, you want to make sales, like you want to make money immediately. So, influencer won't be good for that person. If I correct, Except you have, you are coming to the business with a lot of money. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, so, um, so I hear, if you hear me to add to the question now. So okay. In your opinion, in your opinion, which do you think is more profitable? In your opinion, influencer or digital marketing? Influencer marketing or digital marketing? Which, which, one, which one do you think is more profitable? I've told you this. There's no one. Or there's this is not black and white. I've told you, think about it. If you are playing branding game, do it influencer and make sure you have money to do it for a very long time. Okay. If you are playing, if you are playing direct sales game, run your social media adverts. Now, if you are playing, if you're not selling expensive things, you're selling houses, you're selling something very expensive, 
influencer works for you. That's why you see real estate guys. What do they do? They pick one influencer and they put his picture on, on the billboard. They sign him up. That's influencer. Once you pick an influencer and you give him some things, he feel obligated to, especially if he's rich, to tell his friends about it. Because that's part of the deal. He have to bring back the money you're paying him. All right, all right, Mr. Gideon, thank you for that. I we, we got that correctly now. We got that wrong. That is not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a game of five and six. Yes, you need to know what you're going for and what you think. Exactly. So, so uh, moving on. So, on to this next one now. This, this one is really, really important because for most businesses, uh, going to go um, start up very soon. So, how much do you advise a, a startup business to spend on advertising? Like those now going for the going for sales media, which is the social media ads. How much do you, do you advise them to start as a startup business? As a new ah, business? this is a tricky question. So, if you are if you are a like, brand and you are, and you are coming, it depends on your goal. You can be advertising for sales. You can be advertising for brand impression and for brand likability, for people to like your brand. If you're advertising for people to like your brand, ready to spend money. If you're advertising for immediate sales so that they don't remember your brand, don't spend so much money. Now, it depends on the product you're selling. You can't tell me you're selling real estate and you want to advertise. I've met people that say they want to sell real estate. They want to sell each house is 40 million. And they want to sell 10 units of that house and their advertising budget is 10,000 naira. I just laugh about it. It doesn't work. Now, the way the advertisement okay. works is every day, every day, not everybody, there's some kind of product that not an everyday person can afford. If it's charger and every day person can afford it, you don't need that much. But if it's a product that is more expensive, it's not anybody, it's not everybody that's it's not someone who it's not everybody are going to meet on the streets that can afford that like real estate 40 million so you have to spend more money to reach more people because the percentage of those people that can afford it is low so your advertising budget if you're selling real estate uh, or land at 40 50 million era can never be the same thing with someone who's selling a 3000 era bag if you are selling a 3000 era bag you will have issues your product can never be the same for the three thousand, for the three thousand naira bag, for the three thousand naira bag, what I do is I calculate how much money do you want to make. Let's say you want to sell, you want to sell a hundred of it. So what is twenty percent to thirty percent of that, of your profit? That's what you should spend on advertisement. Spend at least 20 to 30 percent of your profit, at least 10, but a good one is 20 30 percent. Some people grow so much. So, if you want to make if you want to make a hundred on your digital product, 100k on your digital product, and you're selling each for 10,000 naira, you need 10 people. Good I advise you to sacrifice, I would advise you to sacrifice one sale or two sales. Take off 20k and advertise. I'm sure you hit 200k or 300k. If you are spending 20k for a product of 10k because you want to reach 100k you are likely to reach that so the way advertising work is you recoup your money so there should not be a problem it's just that our mentality here in nigeria is that we think the um, paying for adverts is wasting money go and try paying for a television advert try reaching the same people consider the cost of reaching doing real advert and spend money on it you would never waste money on advertisement, no matter what you're doing. Worst case scenario, people are just going to know you. Brand recognition. The person that I'd spend the other person, if I have more money to spend than you, that we're selling the same thing, I can outspend you. My business is better than you. Now, the way the, the way the internet works is this. We have something, the size of your business is the size of your traffic. Traffic is the business. In the size of your business, you see the way we see houses out there where we see a big hotel. One is very big and one is very small, a bungalow. The hotel is bigger than the bungalow. 
the same way we have in business the 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 hotel of business are the guys that have that spend serious money on advertisement to, for a lot of people to know them that's the size of their traffic they may have one billion they may have one thousand uh, one million monthly visits on their page that's how big their business is but the other guys that have one thousand monthly visits his business is small it's probably the bungalow and the other guy is probably the big hotel so the size of your business you have the the, the thing to decide the size of your business now to decide traffic you cannot just generate all of them organically the way it has to work is you have to spend money on advertisement so the more you spend the bigger your business is so if the question is how big do you want to take your business then we discuss how much you should spend on it right all right all right got that thank you for that wonderful one um it's really the, the advertising game really really uh it's something you need to sit down your head what you really want out of that out of your advertising and like you said you are you are correct like what i've noticed with the uh, recently with nigeria you know we nigerians where we receive them it really depends on the uh from first world countries like you said most small business now feel advertising is really really uh you understand to, to me, they don't see it as an as an investment to their business you get it to me, yeah to me, yeah you to, to, to them to, to them they don't see that they don't say uh, uh, about taking risks you get taking most, taking risks exactly uh, most people don't believe uh, advertising is an investment to their business and like you said if they can go to do the advertising to tvs and that cost way more expensive like tv ads and radio ads and stuff yeah, so um, I really got that with Agidon. Thanks for that wonderful one. So on to the next one. Um, I would like you to say something about uh, what you think will be the best medium for advertising going forward as a result of this pandemic now. What do you think will be the best medium for advertising? Since a lot of people will be advertising and at attention uh, online. So what do you think about that? What do you, what do you think? The best medium for advertising. I think social media is still the best medium for advertising. It gives you um, thing, but it should be lesser targeted. You should know what you're doing and um, do it well enough. So for advertising, now a lot of people, the competition is stiff. The competition is getting more because everybody can pick, decide to take a course. Every two weeks, someone is taking a new course and they will complete that course and they can run your adverts. So the idea is you should be able to think beyond the box as a professional offering that service. You should be able to think beyond the box. You should be able to figure out what would make me different. You can be as you can be a beginner. See, the beginner self, after taking those courses, if you go on Facebook, you'll see that after taking those courses, look, this next day they finished, they are not yet done with their course, they are already teaching the course. So the question is, I'm serious. I have no problem with it, man. I only have a problem with you. There is no upgrading. Keep upgrading, keep investing in yourself, keep doing what you do, and um, becoming a badass at it. Take other course, take psychology to it. When you take psychology into advertising, the kind of result you will generate will be different from the kind of result another person will generate. People will not come and meet you for what you, for what you say you can do. People will now meet you, people now talk to people for the result you generate. There is a lot of digital marketing I'm marketers out there, but the people that come to me, they come to me because of they've had, oh, you generated so and so results. I've done it myself and I didn't generate the result. Or I had a guy that was doing it and he wasn't hitting this result. Was he doing something wrong? And I'll tell them, your guy is not doing something wrong. I just did something extra. And I'm going to show them. So you you need to start putting in the extra mile right now to do things. The competition is up. You're, comp you're competing against musicians, your favorite musicians, your products. That is selling something is competing against your, their favorite musicians you're competing against their favorite pastor online that is also online right now you're competing against their favorite reality tv that is also streaming online you're competing against the news you're not competing against people you're also competing against the tv that is coming online you're competing against sarah reporters that they want to watch that is streaming online too you're competing against the comedians that are pushing new comments oh no you're competing against the twerk queen on instagram that is twerking the same data they're going to use so the, think about the opportunity cost and figure out how to give yourself leverage over every other person on that platform so um that that's just should that should do it
That's it. All right, all right. If I got it correctly, you said um, social media has for the best media for advertising. Social media has but we should lay more emphasis now on the targeting. We should know yeah. what we're doing. So I got that and I, I, I totally agree with you. Yes, because it's not all about running social media ads. It's about who it's about if you are targeting the right audience to your business. Yes. So so on to the next one. Um now this question is is because if I ask a lot of people, you know, everybody has different views to it. So I would like to hear your thoughts on what does it take to become a successful internet marketer or let's say digital marketer. What does it take to be a successful one? Like, like you are known, you have a video reputation for yourself, you are you are the good guy for that stuff, for that uh, your stuff. So what does it take? Okay, I think most most people, if they're going to answer this question, they're going to talk about getting more skills, getting so so and so. No, I won't tell you that. I'll tell you leverage. Figure out what's going to give you leverage. What's going to make you different? Mm -hmm. Of course, get the get the skill. The skill is very very important. And nothing is genuinely care about what you do. There are some people that they say they, they started this thing because it's giving money. They they heard that um, digital marketing is money right now. This one so it's money, so they join it. Next tomorrow they will hear cryptocurrency. They will join cryptocurrency because crypto is money. No, you should do this because you have passion. I say a very popular quote, and someone say um, you don't start the business because you have passion. That's not true. <laughs> that is not true. Every single business started with passion. And um, a popular a popular politician and entrepreneur that does he added to it. See some things I know. Some people will tell you some things, not because it's true, but it's because they just want to be savage. You remember when they were saying um, that if you are studying during, during this pandemic, uh, you are wasting your time. You are putting pressure on other people. <laughs> Don't let me cause here. But really, that's rubbish. It's your life. Take it serious. So some people, some people will tell you that you just start a business out of passion. You actually do start a business out of passion. Passion is what is going to keep you during the days nothing is working. Passion is going to keep you during the days you are broke and you are going into debt. Passion is going to keep you the days you have never paid staff and you don't know where your next customer is going to come from. See, passion is going to keep you when your mates are mocking you. People that you've told that you are good at something. And um, instead of them to come to you, they are mocking you. Passion is the only thing that's going to keep you there. Be passionate about it. Learn everything. If you're passionate about it, I don't even need to tell you about learning it. Because you'll definitely learn every single thing. You'll be a freak on it. You just want to figure out every single thing about it. Have that. Then the next thing is, not just being passionate about it, is looking for leverage. Look for a mentor. Look for people that are good. See, there are some guys that are better than me in what I do. But the thing is, I have access to something called an unfair advantage. Life is not fair. Don't think that the best gets the best. No. There are guys that right now that are better than, that knows that you know things better than them, but they are living a better life than you do. But they have unfair advantage. Always look for your unfair advantage. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's situation. There are some people that they don't have to work because... They don't have to work twice as hard because they were born into a better country. There are some people that they don't have to work twice as hard because their uncles have given them leverage. There are some people that they don't have to worry about paying the bills while doing their business so they can focus on it. That's their unfair advantage. But you, you have to pay your bills. You have to think about your siblings. You have to do stuff. You don't have that unfair advantage. So what you have to do is look for your unfair advantage. Mentorship is it is. So one thing that worked for me was I sat my way up the rank. I figured out someone, I had skills. So what I did was I exchanged skills, I, I exchanged skills for mentorship. I figured out people that needed what I what I what I could offer and I made myself valuable. In fact, some of them met me at conferences where I was speaking or giving a training and they were blown away. So I really made the impression. So when I going to get, so when I'm going to meet them, they know what I'm capable of doing and um I told them, I'm going to do this for your fame. I'm going to do this for your fame. At so and so, all I just need from you is 
opportunity to learn from you and that. And they say, why not? Come in. And the process of working with them, I've been able to learn a lot from them. So um, mentorship, look for your unfair advantage, and that's it. Then pay attention to branding. Right. So branding, right. I would never overemphasize that. All right. So if I got that key point of answer right there, you said uh, mentorship, branding, and unfair advantage. So, so thank you for that one. As we begin to wrap this up, so we we'll move on to the next question. Of okay. This, I guess you kind of answered. I guess you kind of answered this earlier, but you still, I, I don't know if you like throwing something to it. So, for a starter or an existing business now going, what's your advice now for a starter or existing business going online now as a result of the pandemic? What you would advise them to do as a result of them going to? If you're going online right now, the first thing I need you to do is to learn how to sell. If, you, if you're just joining us, you could go back. I talked about a story where I talked about um, Gideon going into the hall, the room where there were a lot of girls, but doesn't know how to talk to girls. See, you're already in a place. Going online means you're going to the room where there are going to be a lot of girls. You must know how to talk to them. That is, you must know how to sell. I think that's the biggest... 90% of business fail because they don't know how to sell, not because they don't have funding. If you know how to sell, it pumps in funds to your business. The rest are manage, a management issue where you're doing well and someone decides to backstab you, one of your staffs, or you don't know how to manage the finances. See, it's good if you have that problem. It means you've gotten the fundamental of entrepreneurship and selling well. That means you can start again. But if you don't know how to sell, this is what happens to you. You start a business, you don't know how to sell, it fails. You go back to another one, it fails. You go back to another one, it fails. So you keep going in circle and circle and circle. And the thing with this is, when you're starting business and you're emotionally connected to it, you, 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 and anytime you lose something, you lose a lot without knowing that. It's like a lady, when you start dating, your first love, he broke your, life, your heart. You move to the next guy, he broke your heart. You really love that guy. To the third guy, he broke your heart. The fifth, sixth guy, he broke your heart. What happens? Your heart can never be the same. Your, emotion, your, your emotions can never be the same. You start thinking all guys are the same. What happens? You lose passion for your business the same way you're going to lose passion for the guy, for whichever guy. You start misbehaving. That's exactly what happens. When, this, when you keep having heartbreaks back to back, that's when you come and say men has come. That's when you come up and say, oh, business is a fox. Business doesn't exist. Business, you must definitely fail in business. So um, for you to avoid that, guide your heart. Now imagine you dated the first love, your first love, and you got married to him. You don't understand what happens when people tell you, oh, I dated 10 guys or 20 guys before, and I'm not married. And you're like, what? I want the same thing for you. What I want for you is to learn how to sell right now so that by the time you're doing your business, even if your business, you'll be making so much money that the little problem will not be a big problem. You will be able to fix it with time. If you know how to sell, you'll be able to hire guys that will manage your business for you. If you know how to sell, you'll be able to spend more money on branding, on advertising. If you know how to sell, so um, take courses on knowing how to sell. Learn how to sell. That's the most important thing any entrepreneur needs to know how to sell. If you don't know how to sell, you have serious issue. So, Michael. Over to you. All right. All right. I got that. All right. Uh, I, got, I got that. All right. I got that. So, you said um, the key point I'll take out of this now is that Mo is selling. Yes. Like for business that wants to go online now, they should know how to sell, which is very, very important. For them to go yeah. Online because it's, it's, I know it's going to be, there's a lot of competition already. So you go online now, you should know how to be different by knowing how to sell. Your yeah. Remember, I talked about yeah. your unfair advantage. 
if learning how to sell is your fair advantage, yeah. it's a very big one. Have that as your unfair advantage. Let me add this. I normally don't actually do have a course that teaches people how to sell anything to anyone. Well, I normally don't advertise it here. I don't do this. I was even thinking twice about doing this. But if you'll be interested in that, you can drop a comment section or send me a direct DM and let's see how we can have you enrolled in the academy. Um, Michael, over to you, please. All right, all right. Guys, I hope you heard that. If you are interested, you can send it video on a DM. You understand? Or you can you can also um, um you can also type in the comment that you're interested in it. So it's gonna reach you out, or you go to his DM for that course if you are interested on how to sell. So uh while wrapping this up, Mr. Gideon, thank you for joining me so far on this live stream. So this thank is you. the final question for you. This is a very unique question. Because this 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 question can be different for everybody. So, um, um, my final question is that I would like you to describe yourself in three words. Just three words. Okay, let me do this, Michael. Why don't you describe me in three words? <laughs> okay, because now... a name is not what you call yourself; it's what other people call you. Let me see if I'm doing it well. Okay. Um... Okay, first of all, let me make a public confession. Understand? Okay. Now, um, I've been following you silently on this Facebook. Like, I've been watching your moves. <laughs> you get so, um, I've been watching you. You understand? You don't, I've been watching what you do. You get so, I was like, it's not as if I, I am monitoring like that, but I just check your stuff when you put and your stuff you come across my timeline when I don't come on Facebook at time. So I would like to say that um for me to describe in three words now I would say you are a badass copyright which number one for most of okay. that most of your posts are very lengthy and when I get to read them oh God. <laughs> When I go, <laughs> when I go to it, I mean this guy. <laughs> like, come on, like ah, you 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 write very well. I'm really impressed. I'm a badass copywriter. Then for okay. someone else, badass storyteller. You tell stories okay. with your fuck well. You tell stories with your fuck well. Like, yeah. yeah. People will attest to that. Then, then finally, you you act as if you don't uh, you understand? As in, finally, I'll say that you you do as if you don't sell your stuff. Like, <laughs> but when I come across your time, like you don't really sell stuff like that. You don't. Even, I, I've even I've, I, I've even I've never really seen your ads. Like, come across my like. That. <laughs> I, I would say finally, I say you don't sell, <laughs> but, but I know you sell. That's what keeps the ministry going. So for my three words, yeah, I'll say that a badass copyright, like a badass storyteller, and a, and someone who doesn't sell. I know you said <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me take the last one. Copywriter, yeah. Um, I'm a neuromarketer, so I understand how the human brain works. Then storyteller, story is one of the best ways to tell to sell anything. Let's if you say I don't sell, you're wrong. I sell ideas, and one of the ideas I've successfully sold to you is that I don't sell on my timeline. That's an idea, exactly. but that's not true. Exactly. Um, one of the reasons I, do, I don't believe in spamming my page with adverts. I believe if it's gotten to you so much and you feel like engaging me directly, you come straight to my DM. That's how I know serious people. They come straight to my DM. I, am, I told you I work most times to 6 a.m., 7 a.m. I'm always on my system, still busy. Hello, Mr. Gideon. What's wrong now?
media. Sorry guys, I guess Mr. Gideon does, I don't know what happened, but it's not with me anymore. I guess it's going to come back very soon. So sorry for that. We're almost done. We're almost through with this live stream. It's over an hour plus now, over here. An hour plus. I have one hour twenty something minutes over right there now. So if you were with me since thank you for still thank you for being with me on this live broadcast. So I'll try to bring him back to get to round up this very quickly. I'll try to bring him back, guys, so we go, so we can round up this. You know, so I'm almost done. You just in the final stages. Okay, I guess it's back. Okay, try to bring him back now. Okay, he's about coming back to this climbing this podium back now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gideon. Okay, guys, sorry for the, for that. You're going to join me back now. You like to find the stuff over here. Okay, Mr. Gideon. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Gideon is back with me. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. I, I I can't hear you. I can hear you. It's a video. Okay, I can hear you. So, what do you say last? Okay. Okay. So, um, like I said, it's about selling without selling. Um, and nothing is. Most of the people I work with are not in Nigeria, so most of my audience. Because of the kind of value I bring, I literally don't sell to most Nigerians. I sell my products outside the country. I put in so much energy into those things, and I believe asking Nigerians to pay for it, considering the exchange rates, would not work so well for them. It's going to be extremely expensive for Nigerians. But I still try to make some friendly products for Nigerians, and I I, I have some products that I've been working on for Nigerians, and um, they'll be... They'll be released to the market soon. There's one on content marketing. Remember, I talked about one story some time ago where I talked about um, um, Chike. I, it's on my timeline. I talked about Chike and how he creates content and high consults. So um, I'm working on a course that I've been recording this for for almost over almost a month since that day. I've been recording this course for that long. So for me to take that long to record a course. It means I'm putting in so much. It's not my courses are not like most online courses you're going to see online. My courses are are detailed. Some some of them are like 15 weeks. So if you're doing 15 weeks with workbook and all, it's quite serious. So I'll be launching that one. I think next week we'll be releasing it into the Nigerian market and we'll be trying to work with a Nigerian price for that. And I also have a course on how to sell. But I don't advertise it. 
I, I it's just a criteria for me to know you're very serious you probably have to come to my dm then i will take it off from there if you people that have come to my dm i've worked with them and they're doing so great here on social media i get to see they are doing what they are doing so that's it's about um me and and nothing is a lot of people do aggressive marketing i'm not a big fan of it i'm an introvert so um as an introvert i don't like and all those things as an introvert i don't do that i'm not comfortable with that so that's why i created our academy to teach people who are even introverted like me how to be able to handle that and move on for instance i am not the type that I, that if i'm a lady i will not be comfortable checking on instagram to get sales or shout shout i don't shout you notice i even hardly post i can post like once a month or once in two months or two or twice in a month so I'm that kind of a person. I'm not too shouty, but I still have to pre-sell. And guess what happened to me? Since I learned how to sell, I've had to deal. I've had to deal with clients in all over the niche. I'm currently working with clients in five countries, right? Zone. Dealing with the time zone. That's one of the reason I stay with. I stay awake till 6 a.m. and um, I have to sleep around 6 a.m. I probably wake up around 10. So that's it. All right. All right, Mr. Gidon. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Michael? No, that's the final question. That's the final question. We're wrapping up now. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you for honoring this uh, invitation and this live stream. Get so thank you for. I really appreciate for the value you shared on this live broadcast with me. Also, my also my friends also appreciate you. Get so for those of you who want to connect with Mr. Gideon, you can go to his DM to. To, you can go to can go to his DM to consult him to about if you want to know how to sell, you want to know uh, about more what he does or what how you can add value to your business and your services. You can go to his DM, you understand? So you can reach Mr. Gidon through his DM, through his Facebook, you understand, through his DM. So you can reach him there to and you guys can connect with you can connect with him in his DM and talk to him. By your business and how you can add value to your business. So, guys, thank you for this live broadcast and thank you, everybody, for staying with me up to this time. You know, I know it's, even with the, even um, upon all the challenges we have, setting up the internet connection and everything, we still have to deal with a lot of things. You get so, Mr. Mr. Gideon is off, you know, it's already off. So, Guys, thank you for. I really appreciate you guys for coming on live stream with me. It's not been easy. You get so. It's not. It's not been easy, guys. So thank you for coming on live stream with me. So um, the one reason uh, I guess you guys got value from this, from this live stream. I guess it's trying to come back. Well, I guess that will be necessary because we're already done. I'm. I'm about to end this now because. Um, guys, okay, I, I should just play Adam so you can just say something to you guys. Okay, um. Is he out? I didn't get that. Can you come again? Okay, I said, what if I let you finally? I'd like to know what's the best way to do what? So the best way to do what? 
my network seems to be misbehaving both network for those that are interested in the course just send me a dm <clears throat> let's see how we can take it up from there Okay, guys, bye. All right, guys. Um, thank you. Mean a really happy one. All the same, you guys got value, and I'm very, very happy that I did this. Because, so, um, I did only express my first guest in this case. I started. I also did my comments in the first guest, and of which um, of which I know people really need to know. But even though I've been made and the thing that is Italy, and so I met him over here, so I had the privilege to meet the team in this case. But if you don't mean to do this, you start to meet the team in this case, and you may be able to do this in the same thing. Five days in this case, one bad day. So you can see this in the case, which I'm telling you, it's called from the academy, telling you, telling you, telling you, finally do this so this replay will be available you understand so guys if you want to rewatch this whole interview session again this live interview session so it's going to be available for you guys i'm going to going to be available for you guys to rewatch this live interview session so thank you for staying with me thank you for 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 joining me on the first on the maiden edition of kaya talk with my camera so subsequently and Occasionally, I'll be bringing more people on this live interview session with me. You get, I'll be bringing other people, professionals, you understand? So, I'll bring those from other industries to come and talk about, even in my own industry, which is the creative industry. You get, so guys, thank you for for everything and thank you for staying with me. And those who who uh, I appreciate Mr. Chika, who stayed with me. Uh, others, Mr. Mr. Jordan, uh, others who joined this live stream, all uh, those who, who reacted to the live stream. Uh, I would like to mention some names. So give me the indulgence to mention some names. Um, I really appreciate you guys. So that's why I'm calling your names out. I I really appreciate you guys. Um, Mr. Chika, Mr. Jordan, Mr. Peter, Mr. Gideon, Mario Chuku, Mr. Miss Mary Benedicta. Okay, thank you for reacting to the live stream and also for staying with me. Thank you for everybody. Even though I've been sorry that it's past the timeline, I also thank you. So my the next edition, the next edition, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I guess it's going to happen this month. 
let me say before, but I don't, I, I can't say. So I'm going to be working a lot of stuff to get. So I'm putting a lot of things together to make this better and and because I'm working a lot of stuff to make this live stream more better and more uh engaging and more valuable for you guys. So my next one I don't say yet. You understand? So my next live stream. Like my next edition, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I believe it's gonna happen still in this July. This is July is a special month, yes. So, guys, thank you for being on the first media edition with me, and I love you guys to really act on the lessons from this live stream. You can hear Mr. My guest, Mr. Gideon, when he said about a lot of stuff: marketing, um, branding, advertising, um, sales. They are very important for businesses and and for businesses that want to go online, understand they are very, very important. Those four keywords, uh, those four things: marketing, branding, advertising, sales. They are very important for you to really uh, stand out. And I'll try to leave this for any better. Let me leave this with you. And if there is something, if something like this and then coming to the next generation, I feel it's good. I love you guys. again i've said thank you count countless times but i know that but i'm still going to thank you more so i really appreciate it. so kaya talk with michael Emos signing out and i'm your humble host michael Emos, and i'll see you in the next edition peace